individuals who have agreed to discuss cases today. Because as uh, Dr. Tosi said, I think um, the, the uh, interaction uh, is what we are really looking for with the ECHO Symposium. So um, today, as, uh, as Dr. Tosi mentioned, I'm going to talk about uh, osteogenesis imperfecta uh, uh, and uh, dominant versus recessive inheritance and the impact on treatment. So um, for osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, there is a phenotypic classification system of osteogenesis imperfecta that was developed by uh, David Salens. Uh, and uh, the, it is a numbering system where type one is the mildest type of osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, they typically have fairly normal stature uh, and while they do fracture easily, uh, their bones typically heal normally. Type 2 osteogenesis imperfecta is the perinatal lethal form with severe in utero fractures. Type 3 uh, is the most severe surviving form of osteogenesis imperfecta that's called severe deforming. Uh, individuals typically also have dentinogenesis imperfecta with this. And then type 4 is kind of an intermediate phenotype between type 3 and type 1 that's called moderately deforming osteogenesis imperfecta. <clears throat> there are also uh, other types that have been added. Uh, if you uh, take a uh, gene, strictly gene-based approach to osteogenesis imperfecta, this goes up to about 19 different types of OI. Uh, however, as I'll mention on a later slide, many of the autosomal recessive forms of OI are uh, either very uh, similar to non-recessive forms. Uh, and so my inclination is typically to stick with the Sillens classification irrespective of the gene, with the exception of types 5 and 6 OI, uh, because uh, these two do have uh, distinct features um, uh, that are clear from other types of OI. Type 5 is typically due to uh, uh, autosomal recessive mutations in the gene uh, IFITM5, and it's characterized by uh, hyperplastic callus formation with fracture and uh, uh, ossification of the interosseous ligament of the forearm. Uh, type 6 uh, uh, is uh, particularly notable because it is an osteomalacia phenotype with decreased osteoclast activity, um, and that's caused by uh, the gene uh, serpin F1. Now, the, as I had alluded to earlier, uh, there are dominant and recessive forms of osteogenesis imperfecta. Autosomal dominant forms of osteogenesis imperfecta are due to uh, mutations or pathogenic variants in uh, one of two genes that encode a protein that make up type 1 collagen. And those two genes are call 1A1 and call 1A2. Uh, type 1 collagen, of course, is made up of two call 1A1 proteins and one call 1A2 protein. And in general, in individuals that have what are called haploinsufficiency mutations, meaning that no protein is made from that gene, these individuals, as you can see uh, over on the left-hand side of the slide, uh, their type 1 collagen molecules are structurally normal or qualitatively normal, but they have a decreased amount of type 1 collagen. And in general, again, uh, uh, people with these kind of uh, hap with this kind of haploinsufficient or quantitative defect in type one collagen typically have the mildest type of OI, type one OI. In contrast, individuals with the more severe forms of OI uh, have typically missense mutations. And these are dominant negative mutations because the protein gets made and that protein gets incorporated into the type 1 collagen triple helical structure. 
However, because of the mutation, as you can see over on the right, uh, a significant portion of the collagen molecules uh, are structurally abnormal that lead to uh, over modification, as you can see with the hydroxy groups shown there. And so uh, this, these types of OI are generally uh, referred to as qualitative defects in type 1 collagen, again, as opposed to quantitative defects that are typical of the mildest type, type 1 OI. And uh, uh, these uh, primary disorders of type 1 collagen account for 95% of uh, individuals with OI. I'm going to stop you for a second, Reed. Um, would everyone please check their phones? We're getting a lot of background noise from one of the phones, and, and that's hard um, on poor Reed, who's working so hard. Um, please, please mute if you're, uh, if you're not talking. And as far as uh, recessive forms of OI, uh, 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 these account for about 5% of uh, uh, OI uh, phenotypes, um, and um, these are typically in the kind of more severe uh, silence classification range, the type 2, 3, 4 type of OI. We can break these down into kind of four broad categories. There are a series of genes uh, listed in blue that uh, are responsible for the post-translational modification and uh, cross-linking of type 1 collagen molecules. Uh, there are genes uh, that are important for the secretion of type 1 collagen and are also involved in endoplasmic, ret endoplasmic reticulum stress. There's one gene, BMP1, that is related to collagen processing. And then there are a series of genes, including one X-linked gene, 1A, that is involved in osteoblast differentiation and bone mineralization. So, um, uh, as everyone on this call, I'm sure, is very familiar with, uh, we can kind of uh, very simply think about uh, dynamic bone and bone growth as a process of both bone resorption, driven by osteoclasts, or bone formation, driven by osteoblasts. Uh, and uh, since we're talking about therapy, uh, uh, as everyone knows, uh, bisphosphonates are commonly used to uh, target osteoclasts, um, uh, to decrease bone turnover, uh, to increase bone mineral density, uh, decrease pain, uh, and ideally to improve quality of life and hopefully decrease the risk of fractures. There are um, uh, agents, uh, uh, either approved or uh, in investigation uh, for osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, uh, that um, are, uh, have their effect by modulating or increasing the activity of osteoblasts, shown over on the right, uh, teriparamide, uh, romosuzumab, and uh, uh, the investigational agent, uh, cestrusumab. So I'm just going to uh, briefly talk about teriparatide in OI. So this was a study led by uh, Eric Orwall, who I think everybody heard from a couple of months ago. Um, there were uh, our site as well as uh, a couple of other sites participated. Uh, this is a trial of adults with osteogenesis imperfecta. Uh, there were 78 individuals uh, randomized to either get placebo or to get teriparatide. Um, and uh, one of the things that uh, was noted is that um, there uh, was, with teriparatide and OI, uh, 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 indicators of increased uh, bone remodeling uh, with uh, increased uh, NTX and P1 and P uh, uh, in, in those receiving teriparatide as uh, compared with placebo. Um, uh, and as well, uh, uh, increases in uh, uh, lumbar spine bone mineral uh, density. But one of the very interesting things um, uh, sorry, and also uh, bone strength uh, as measured by a variety 
uh, of things uh, shown here were uh, uh, improved with teriparatide as compared with placebo. But one of the most interesting things that was noted in the trial is uh, when um, um, we uh, Eric stratified for OI type individuals with type 1 OI. Again, these are generally individuals with haploinsufficiency uh, OI. You can see that they had a, a significant change in bone mineral density from baseline, whereas types 3 and 4 uh, did not really uh, get uh, much of a change. And again, you can see here uh, that same th thing uh, demonstrated with the placebos uh, in the uh, box and whisker chart, where uh, again, type 1 OI uh, received much more benefit from teriparatide as compared with the um, uh, types 3 and 4 OI. Um, I'm going to kind of explain why we think that may be in just a moment, but as uh, more background, um, my colleague Brendan Lee here uh, at Baylor College of Medicine, along with graduate student Ingo Graffe, uh, a couple of years ago, showed that in uh, CRTAP uh, uh, knockout mice, uh, CRTAP I should say, is one of the um, recessive genes known to cause osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, that they, these uh, mice had increased uh, TGF beta sigli signaling, um, and um, when they um, uh, looked at that um, compared with uh, wild type mice, you can see uh, uh, um, the differences there in uh, bone turnover and increased uh, phosphosmad uh, activity, again, related to the TGF beta signaling. One of the, oops, sorry. One of the interesting things that was also seen is when they used uh, anti-TGF beta antibody to treat these mice. What you uh, could see shown on the bottom panel uh, in the far left is wild type control. In the middle is uh, those animals with no treatment. And then on the far right, uh, the uh, vertebrae uh, with treatment with an anti-TGF beta antibody. And you can see the uh, improved bone architecture and improved bone density there. Um, we also are uh, conducting, as part of the Brittle Bone Disease, Rare Disease Clinical Research uh, Network, uh, uh, phase one clinical trial in individuals with osteo adults with osteogenesis imperfecta using uh, 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 another TGF beta, anti TGF beta antibody called frezolimumab. Um, uh, this neutralizes all three isoforms of TGF beta, uh, and um, there are detailed toxicological studies that were done. This study, again, just very briefly, is uh, two groups. The first group, um, uh, who's com or stage one, I should say, who's completed enrollment, had two groups uh, at two different doses, uh, and we will be uh, 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 proceeding with this uh, study. <clears throat> it's known that um, uh, parathyroid hormone uh, can, uh, sorry, the TGF-beta can inhibit uh, signaling with PTH um, as shown here. And so again, um, when uh, uh, Brendan Lee and Ingo Graffa had uh, looked at this, uh, uh, you can see um, that uh, uh, in the uh, graph there, uh, in looking at uh, various measures in wild types shown in the shaded gray versus CRTA mouse shown uh, in the colored bars that you can see the green bar on the far left so those uh, uh, knockout CRTAP mice with OI uh, when they received uh, both pa uh, uh, parathyroid hormone as well as it uh, anti-TGF beta antibody that they got the biggest response um, as compared with groups that either got parathyroid hormone alone or the anti-TGF beta antibody alone. Um, so um, I want to uh, thank my collaborators as well as the OI Foundation and um, leave plenty of time for all the great case discussion that we uh, have lined up for today. <laughs>